Preparing for a new school year can either be a blast or an absolute nightmare. I mean, you get to know your new students, what they like, how they learn, what they did over the summer, and this process can be quite overwhelming for you. So I wanna help you guys out. So in today's video, I'm going to give you 15, no, make that 16 icebreakers for kids. Are y'all ready? Hey, Fun Bebo! Welcome back to Everything Aja. If you're new here, hi, my name is Aja. Here on Everything Aja, I help parents and teachers just like you make learning as fun and engaging as possible. And I do this through really fun games, activities, and also simple and easy educational tips. If this sounds like something that you need in your life, then make sure that you like this video, subscribe down below, and hit that bell because that bell icon is how you will get notified each and every Tuesday when I upload my new video. All right, so today I'm gonna give you 16 really fun icebreakers for kids. So let's get started. Now typically we use icebreakers during the beginning of the school year period. So a lot of these games will be geared towards the beginning of the school year, but you can certainly use these icebreakers at any given time of the year. Okay, so with that out the way, let's get into game number one. And game number one is school charades. If you didn't know, fun fact, I used to be in theater and I absolutely love to act. And that is typically true with most kids, so let's just go ahead and get them to act. Once you have everybody divided up into two teams, you are going to go ahead and display my school charades game. I have the link down below in the description. It is a free game. So all you do is need to click the link and get your free game. So what you would do is project the game on either a TV, projector, whatever you have in your room so that all players can see all of their choices. When it's a team's turn, you will choose one person to go at a time and that person will simply act out one of the spaces on the board. The really cool thing is of course, all the possible choices are on the board, meaning the answer is right in front of everybody's face. All the other team members will quietly deliberate and figure out which one of the answer choices they think their teammate is acting out. Now, before anybody's turn starts, you will go ahead and set a 60 second timer. So if the timer goes off or if a team is done deliberating, then that turn is over. Everybody on the team will state out loud which one of the choices they think their teammate acted out. If they were right, then they get a point. If they were wrong, then all the other teams, if you have one team or multiple teams, will get a point. So you don't want to be wrong. Now, once the answer choice is correctly acted out, you will go ahead and give a nice little X on that box, and then it's the next team's turn. Now, you'll continue to let each team go and act out things until so A, all teams have gone five times, or B, a team reaches a certain amount of points. So before you even start a game, you could say the first team to 10 points or the first team to 15 points would win this game. Don't forget to download your freebie below in the description. Now, game number two is one of my favorite games to play with kids in the classroom, and that is Four Corners. In fact, I love this game so much that I just created a back to school version just for you. So. With Four Corners, I created the PDFs, and what you would do with the PDFs that say A, B, C, and D is tape a sheet of paper in each corner of the room. This way, kids will be able to rotate to the correct answer. And then on your projector, you'll go ahead and display the video. Once your class is ready, all you have to do is click play. For each given category, all the students will go to that corner of the room of their favorite answer choice. So if they like steak over shrimp, they're gonna go to the corner representing steak. Now, if you don't want kids moving all around, then included in the game are these really cool A through D signs, and then kids can simply just hold up their answer choice. Now I must ask, do you like phones or do you like computers? This makes you prepared for our next game and coming in at game number three, we have this or that. This or that is another screen-based game where you simply have a projector, put up the game, and hit play. For each question, kids will have to choose if they like this option or if they like that option. If you're playing in a room and want kids to get active, which is what I'm all about, you can have kids go to the left or the right side of the room. This just gives everybody a visual of what kids actually like. If you don't want kids moving all around, you can also create these really cool signs and kids can either hold up if they like this or if they like that. So our next game is even more simple and it is called Let's Move. 
And this also gets kids moving around. So with Let's Move, all kids will either stand beside their desk or either in a circle, and you'll go ahead and play the video on your projector. Kids will answer a series of questions not by talking, but by moving with their bodies. So for example, it may ask if you like the color blue, touch your nose. And then clearly kids will touch their nose and be able to look around to see how many other kids touch their nose. Or jump if you like reading. And they'll do these really cool movements and get to know each other. Since we're already moving and getting to know each other, let's jump into our next game, which is the Get to Know You Scavenger Hunt Bingo! Yes! So I pretty much combined scavenger hunt and bingo all in one game. With the scavenger hunt bingo, you will simply print out enough sheets of paper for each and every child. I have the links down below to all these games in the description so you can check that out as soon as you're done watching this video. Once all your kids have the sheet of paper printed, they are ready to go around the room and meet their new classmates. In order to fill up a box, you'll have to find somebody in the room that does that thing. So for example, one box says play piano so you have to walk around the room and find somebody that plays the piano they'll simply walk around and try to fill in five boxes in a row either horizontally diagonally or vertically the first person to get bingo will yell bingo and they're the winners for these games all right so our next game is two truths and a lie and I'm sure you guys have heard this game because this is one of my favorite icebreakers so with two truths and a lie, you can start off and you will think of three things about yourself. Two things that are true and one thing that is not true. The object of the game is for the kids to figure out which one of those things is a lie. They can simply write it down on a sheet of paper, simply yell A, B, C, or D, and then of course you'll share which one was your lie and then they see if they were right or wrong. And after your turn, you'll start calling on your children to share and then they will share two true things about themselves and one not so true thing about themselves one I love to play games two I hate traveling and three I absolutely love tigers two is the lie you're right all right so like I said earlier most of the time we do icebreakers we do this at the beginning of the school year so these next few games are going to be geared towards your first week of school icebreakers all right so our next game is called search and find and this is another projected game that kids can play once your kids have a sheet of paper and they can all see the screen all you do is simply click play on the video the video play out and all kids will be able to go through all four rounds and they will try to collect all the school supplies they can possibly collect and put in their book bag because you can't start school without a book bag of course the object of the game is to collect all 13 school supplies thus starting school Woo! and in order to do that you have to quickly and i mean quickly count up all the objects on the screen so for example during this round kids have to figure out how many globes how many paper clips and how many magnifying glasses they can find in 10 to 15 seconds if the game goes too fast for your kids of course you can always pause and give them some extra time but the object of the game is to collect all your school supplies and put them in your book bag all right so the next game is the where is explorer game and with the where is explorer game you want kids to be able to explore your classroom on their own so this will be a perfectly good game to do like the first or second day of school before kids get acclimated to the room with the Where is Explorer game, you will print off enough copies for each child. Then you're going to give kids five minutes to walk around the room and find as many of the objects as possible. Instead of just finding the object, they have to write down in the box where those items are located in the room. So for example, crayons is one of the box. They have to figure out, okay, where does Miss Aja store her crayons? This eliminates a lot of your here is our classroom library because if you do this game kids actually get to explore the classroom library on their own all right so since we just collected 13 school supplies our next game is called the school to-do list with the school to-do list all kids will be thinking about what are they going to actually do during this school year you will set a timer for two minutes during those two minutes everybody will have a sheet of paper in front of them like a notebook sheet of paper and they're going to write down all the things 
things they think they're going to do this school year. Then at the end of the timer, you will have kids share out loud and figure out what are the common things that they all put. At the end of the timer, you will choose one child at a time to share off their list of school to do tasks. If any other kids had the same task as that student, then everybody that had that task must cross it off. You're gonna notice that everybody's list will get shorter and shorter as you go around the classroom because all of their items are getting checked off. At the end, you will see whoever has the most items still on their to-do list would win because they came up with the most unique things to do during this school year. Now at next game you will either give everybody a sheet of paper or a dry erase board just they need something to write with and at the top of everybody's paper or dry erase board they're going to write the words back to school. Then I'm going to set a two minute timer and all the kids will have to figure out how many new words they can create using the same letters as back to school. Now this makes kids use their brain muscles since they've been watching TV all summer and they get to create some new words. The object of the game is to be the child that has the most new words from the letters of back to school. Alright so this next icebreaker is actually the icebreaker I do each and every time I teach a group of kids and it is called the snowball fight yes you're gonna let your kids fight with the snowball fight you'll give everybody a sheet of paper on their paper kids will write seven unique facts about themselves but they will not put their name on the paper so you have to make sure you start off by saying don't put your name on the sheet of paper and write seven cool things about you now if you have kids that aren't quite writing they could draw seven cool things about them and that works just as well once everybody has their seven cool things you'll have everybody kind of gather around in a circle with their sheet of paper you'll then tell everybody to ball up their sheet of paper and then hold their sheet of paper and when you say go they can have a snowball fight below the waist now during the snowball fight you will simply set a 60 second timer on your phone this way everybody's not fighting for a long time before you let the kids fight I would simply give them a stopping cue so for me I always say now when I do this that means everybody must stop throwing the snowballs and I've never had a kid go past me doing that because I gave them a clear stopping signal. Once the timer goes off you'll make sure every single child grabs a snowball off the floor. Then everybody will open up their sheets of paper, make sure they don't have their own, then they have to figure out who sheet of paper they have in their hand. So then you'll have kids simply state out loud all seven facts and guess who they think it is. You'll allow each child to share and everybody will learn seven cool things about each and every one of their classmates. Now each person only gets one guess so if they're wrong whoever is the correct person will simply say nope that's me and then they will go ahead and read their sheet of paper and do their guess. The game will continue to play out until every single kid has shared their sheet of paper and had their guess and then everybody Everybody in the classroom just learned seven cool things about each person in their new room. The next game is called the beach ball game and for the beach ball game you will simply write out random questions on a beach ball, have all your kids kind of gather in a circle and then toss the beach ball. Once a child catches the beach ball they will read the question out loud and then answer that question. After they answer the question they'll simply throw the beach ball to another person until each and every person has shared one cool fact about themselves. Our next really cool back to school game is the I Spy Icebreaker. And with I Spy, everybody can actually play this game sitting in their seats and they get to actually look around their classroom. They'll simply state, I spy with my little eyes something that is round. So typically we play I Spy with colors, but with the classroom version of I Spy that you're playing today, they can state any sort of adjective. So they can say round, sharp, and this way all the other kids will kind of look around their room and guess which new cool thing is in their classroom. It's also another way to get kids acclimated to their new classroom without you sitting there giving them a lecture. Now the next game actually has me laughing because you guys are probably like, you turned that into a game? Yes, girl. All right, so next game is the classroom rules countdown. 
And yes, it's a perfectly good game to do while you're already doing your classroom rules. So typically during the first week of school, you're going over rules such as where to line up, where to sit down on the rug, how you want kids to rotate through the classroom, right? You do that anyway. So with this game, kids will always start off at their seat because that is kind of like their home base. Then you're going to state out certain class routines that you've already gone over. So for example, lining up at the door. So you'll say, all right, line up at the door. Whoever the last person is to line up at the door is out of the game. So they have to sit down at their seat and continuously watch the kids play. Then you'll state out another classroom task, such as, all right, go read a book. Then all the kids will go to the reading center and read a book. Whoever the last person was goes back to their seat. And they're like, man, I was too slow. If you don't want kids to technically be out, you can simply state these things and see who is the fastest to line up at the door or go get a drink of water. And this really allows kids to have fun with the rules. Now, before I get into our last two games, did I mention that you can actually get all of my on-screen back to school games in a bundle? You guys know I am always trying to make things as easy and simple for you as possible. So I actually have a back to school bundle where you can get the search and find game, this or that, let's move, four corners, the where is explore game, and the scavenger hunt bingo all together down below you have the link in the comments and the description so you can actually get a bundle and then you can get the games a lot cheaper and there are your entire first week of school games done for you so make sure you check that bundle out down below in the description all right so let's get into our last two games our next game is jeopardy and what you're going to do is to divide up all the kids into different teams during a team's turn, you will go ahead and choose one person that will give you the category and point number. Once the answer is shown on the screen, they'll deliberate with their team and figure out the answer. They must word it in the form of a question. If they're right, they gain those many points. If they're wrong, they lose those many points. You'll continue to play until all the points on the screen are gone and whoever has the most points wins. Now our last icebreaker is an acoustic poem. All kids will take a sheet of paper and write their name vertically. Then you'll give them like five minutes and they will create a poem using the letters in their name, have them write adjectives to describe themselves, and then have kids share their poem so that everybody will learn about them. So there you have it. You have 16 really cool icebreakers for kids. You know what to do. Go ahead and grab your own back to school game bundle. I have the link down below in the description and also in the comments. Don't forget to let me know.